So this week, I'm going to talk to you about a conference that I got to attend last week. And last week, I attended a conference called Playlist Live. And Playlist Live is a conference that's been, ha that's been happening for 10 years straight. And it's really focused on YouTube content creators. But this year, there was a whole bunch of different content creators. Um, there was YouTube content creators. There was TikTok content creators. There was podcasters such as myself. Um, there was film people. There was digital people, media people. I mean, everybody was at this conference. And it was such an interesting span of people. Um, there was people as young as like 13 years old, maybe even younger than 13, to all the way to like 65, 70 years old. It was like a huge span of people. And it was really cool because all the stuff that I learned at this conference, all the panels that I went to, all the people I talked to, whatever they said about content creation, whether they were a YouTuber or a TikTok person or a podcaster, that feedback is useful for any creative on this journey. And so I'm going to share with you the feedback and the advice that I got from these panels. Um, there's three different tracks when you go to Playlist Live. There's the track that's called the community track, which is for fans of YouTube creators. So like there's a bunch of meet and greets and meetups where you get to meet these influencers that you admire, that you watch. And so I didn't do any of those because I didn't know who a lot of these YouTubers were, um, probably because they were 10 or 15 years younger than me. Though there were some older, not older, seasoned or more mature YouTubers there. There definitely were, but I just, I'm just not a big... Um, there's certain people I watch on YouTube and they were not there, or I don't think they were. Um, then there's the insight track, which is created for current and aspiring YouTube content creators. And then there's the industry track for people who work in the media industry. So I went to panels across, um, the two different tracks. And so a couple things before I start though, when I went to these panels, some advice that I want to give you guys is if you guys are content creators, right? And whether you are writing, whether you are performing, whether you're um, filming, photographing, whatever your creative journey is, if at any point in time you want to be on a panel or you want to be a keynote speaker or you want to just be on TV or radio talking about what you do, I highly encourage you to get some training. So, and that doesn't have to be professional training. That can just be as easy as getting a mic, sitting in front of a camera and practicing. Practicing presence, practicing confidence, practicing talking into a mic, practicing enunciating your words and being confident in front of the camera, in front of people. And it was just fascinating to me because these people on the panel self-survive off of the money they make on YouTube or TikTok. This is their job. And they sit in front of a camera all day, but when you put them up on the panel, a lot of them could not make eye contact. A lot of them could not, did not understand, like you need to lean in and talk into the mic. A lot of them could not put a sentence together. And the weirdest part was, is they all got the questions in advance. So they knew what questions they were going to get asked. Cause it was basically like a moderator asked a question and then went down the row of panelists and each panelist answered it. And there was maybe like two or three audience Q and A at the end, but nothing like tricky, nothing that was like, Oh my God, I can't answer this. But yet some of the panelists were like, Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Let me think about it. Hmm. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. And I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking you knew what they were going to ask you. Like, how did you not prepare for that? And so really just prepare yourself if, for these opportunities, because once you get this opportunity, it doesn't grant, doesn't make it, doesn't mean that you're going to get this opportunity again and again and again. You've got to prove yourself the first time to get the second opportunity, the third opportunity. What I also thought was super interesting is that some panelists just didn't show up, but they were at the conference. Like, it's not like they just didn't come to the conference at all. They came to the conference and they didn't show up to do their panel. And if you don't show up to do your panel, that looks really bad, not just to the organizers, but to the people who came to see you, because you don't know how many of those people in the audience actually just came because you were on the panel. And also when you are a panelist on these, in these conferences, and I, I bet for the most part, most of these panelists were paid, um, their full airfare, they were paid for their hotel and they were probably even given extra money on top, like a stipend to come and do this. And so you can't just not show up. Um, and the last thing I will say is you are your brand. And I know that millennials and Gen Z's, we have a very relaxed sense of style lately. We don't have to wear suits to work or put a tie on. I mean, some of us may still have to if we work in like venture capital or private equity or investment banking. But with all these startups that are in Silicon Valley and then you've got Amazon and Google and Facebook, you can wear jeans to work, you can wear sneakers to work, you can wear a hoodie to work. So there's no sense of business professional. And so 
what I noticed on the panel is that some of these people look like they just woke up. And I'm not saying that you had to come on this panel and wear a dress or put on a suit or a tie, but I am saying that who you are, how you, how you present yourself is a representation of you. And so maybe, maybe take a little bit more effort in what you wear when you perform or when you're on stage or when you're on a panel, make sure your shirt is ironed and maybe tucked in and I know you love those ripped jeans, but maybe the panel's not the best place to wear it. Maybe the after party is a better place to wear it. Or you know what I mean? Like there's a, there is a fine line between like, you look like you rolled out of bed and this is how I dress. This is my casual look. And so those were just some of the key takeaways that I had. Okay. So let's jump in to the panels. The first panel I went to was called motivation and the creative process. And I'm going to read my notes for these because um, there was a lot of panels that I went to. So the first one was motivation and the creative process. Creators share tips about what goes into their creative process that keeps them inspired and motivated. Now I'm going to tell you the speakers for each panel. So just in case you are a big YouTube or TikTok fan or a podcaster and you know these names, then you know um, which panels they were on. And if you want to know specific feedback that they gave, um, reach out to me at hiatfunnybrowngirl.com and I can tell you what they said. Okay. So speakers were Super Mario Logan, Lee the Fourth, and then some other guy that did not give his name. Key takeaways. One, set aside time to write down ideas so when you have writer's block, you can still create content. Two, aim to make the fans happy and do not chase fame or money. Three, be consistent with putting out content. Four, most ideas have been done before. Look at old videos and see how you can make them better or more relevant. Five, don't do it for the money. And this one was an interesting comment because the guy who made it was the Logan, the Mario Logan, what's his name? Super Mario Logan. And he's like 16 or 17 years old and he has a Lamborghini. And he was talking about how material things don't make him happy. Like creating content makes him happy. And so number six is, so number five was don't do it for the money. And number six is do what makes you happy. And that's what he was really stressing. Like don't do it because you want to become famous or you want to own a Lamborghini. He's like, that doesn't make me happy. Knowing that the audience really loves to watch my content, that makes me happy. Eight, if you feel burnt out, try something new in your life, like travel or skydiving for a new perspective. Nine, treat it like a job. Ten, before you launch, have ideas in your back pocket so you can stay on schedule. And I think this one is super important. That's why I put it as ten. When I started this podcast, I actually had four or five episodes ready to go in the, my back by, in my in the back pile or whatever it's called in the log backlog because I knew that every week that I was going to put out a podcast. And if you know from 2018, we were on a weekly schedule, and every week I was putting out a podcast you are going to get burnt out and you're going to run out of time. And if somebody cancels an interview on you, you're going to be short an episode. And so have ideas in your backlog, be ready for those moments where you want to go on a vacation or you got sick or something just didn't work out right. So you have something to pull from. The second panel I went to was called how to build your personal brand. How do you build a brand that is authentic and resonates with your viewers? Speakers included Alex Ojeda, Cosette, Cosette Renab and Jay Mendoza. Most of these um, speakers were TikTokers. And if you don't know what TikTok is, it is a social media platform for creating, sharing, and discovering short music videos. It used to be known as Musical.ly. Um, I did download it and I went on TikTok and it's kind of a fascinating app. It's a lot of people who do dancing. There's a lot of dance videos on there, synchronized dance. Like they, I'm not sure where they learned the dance moves from and then they come on TikTok and they do the dance moves. Um, but there's a lot more on TikTok now. There's there's people are doing skits, they're showing their travel, they're doing fashion, they're doing beauty. So definitely check it out if you have an interest in any of those categories. It's just another way, another social media platform like Instagram or Facebook to get your voice out there and your content out there. Um, the, the content is usually 15 seconds long. It can be as long as a minute, but um, most of it is just short, quick entertainment. So key takeaways on how to build your personal brand. Make your brand consistent across all your videos. All your videos should have a similar vibe. If you want to be family friendly, then all your content should be family friendly. Being family friendly will open more doors with brands and sponsors. Three, be genuine. People want to see the real you. Don't sacrifice your authenticity. Four, create what makes you happy and what you believe in. People can tell. Five, don't try to satisfy everyone. Six, People don't know you, so don't let their negative comments bring you down. Be unapologetically you. And this one is really hard for me, the negative comments one. 
And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that, but it was fascinating that in every panel I did when they did Q&A, in every panel, somebody asked the question, like, how do you deal with negative comments? And everybody on the panel said, in the beginning, they struggled with negative comments, but they quickly began to learn that the negative comment had nothing to do with them and everything about the person leaving them. The person leaving those negative comments is the one that has the issue, that has the problem, that has something so deep within them that they don't wanna see other people be successful. And so that's why they leave the negative comments. They also said that that negative comment is based on the content that they saw. It has nothing to do with based on you or your personality because they don't know you. They don't know who you are. They only know that quick snip bit, snip bit of content that they saw on the internet. And so you can't let that negativity get you down. So a lot of people say, a lot of people said that they either delete them. Some said they leave them up. Um, it fuels them. Um, but they said, do what works for you, but don't get sucked into somebody else's negativity because just remember it has nothing to do with you. Seven, make other people's ideas better. It's not stealing. It's inspiration to grow. Eight, don't compare yourself to other people. Like don't compare yourself like why does this person have more likes or why does this person have more followers or why is this person trending in more countries? And I fall into this a lot. So I'm not even gonna be a hypocrite and say that I don't do this. I'm like, oh my God, this person's trending in more countries or has more podcast downloads. And so for me, that fuels me, um, but it's not healthy. And so I've gotten actually a lot better at just not paying attention to what other people do because I have to realize like my content is my content and their content is their content and we have two different audiences, right? So, and I also have a different perspective on my podcast. My podcast is not necessarily for the masses. It's, it's for creatives who want to take their passion to the next level and somebody else's, it could be just about worldwide news. And so of course they get a bigger, they have a bigger audience. Nine, don't be scared to post. You have nothing to lose. And when I say post, I mean, don't be afraid to put something out into the internet or on a podcast channel or a blog. Don't be afraid to do it. And 10, be consistent. But remember, quality over quantity. Care about what you put out there. The third panel I went to was called Production 101. Now, I went to this panel specifically because JP Lambiates, if you don't remember, JP Lambiates was on episode 45 of the Creative Breakthrough podcast. He is the founder of the YouTube channel called Healthy Junk Food Nation. And so this, um, this panel was really about how do you create content that stands out? What do you need in terms of equipment, editing tips, and what you should be thinking about in general best practices for building an audience? Speakers, JP Lambiates, his fiance, Julia Gulia, Legendary Shots, Most Amazing, Information Overload, Jonathan Paula, Paula, and Ben De Almeida. Okay, key takeaways. One, make your idea unique by bringing in your personality and unique perspective. So this came up because JP was talking about like almost every idea has been done. Everybody has done something that you've thought about, but how do you make it unique? You bring your personality into it. So JP and Julia do a cooking show. They cook junk food. That was their unique spin on a cooking show. JP loved junk food and they loved cooking, so they brought the two together. Two, if you have an idea, do your due diligence before you start to see who else has done it and how you can make it better. Don't worry if the idea has been done before. Put your own spin on it and make it better. Three, highlight your strengths in your content so that you can continue to make quality content and not get stuck. So an example they gave is that if you're not a singer, don't start making singing content because you're, you're gonna have a really hard time to be consistent and continue to churn out content about singing. Four, the more you put out there, the more opportunities you will have. Five, don't have high expectations. Remember, everyone started at the bottom and now they're here, meaning on this panel. Six, find something you enjoy. Otherwise, it becomes work. Seven, show your... Passion shows through your work. So make sure you enjoy what you're doing. Eight, take time to soul search. Find what you're strong at and what you enjoy doing. Nine, remember, it has never been easier to create content and to be seen. So what are you waiting for? And 10, you don't need any fancy equipment to get started. Your cell phone has a camera, editing, editing tools, and filters. You're ready to start now. And that's the same if you want to be a, a YouTuber, a TikToker, if you want to have a podcast, you can do all of this through your cell phone. Okay, the next panel that I went to was called Finding Your Place. How to carve out a special place for yourself, your content, and your communities in the sea of creators and platforms. Speakers included Drew Lynch, Fur, 
Hannah Forcier, Sarah Luger, Sup, Sup, Sup Daily or Sup Daily, and Sid's Vids. Number one, key takeaway. Find what you do well, hone in on that, repeat it, and refine it. Two, do not follow a formula. Three, develop your own voice and style. The next panel I went to was called Expanding Your Creative Career. These creators started on one platform and have now been able to translate their successes onto different platforms, vertical gigs and jobs, and more. Speakers included Mark Daniel, Brandy Marie King, Shark Puppet, The Ballinger Family, Thomas Hayden, and Swoozy. Key takeaways. Find what platform works for you. Is that a podcast? Is that YouTube? Is that blogging? Is that Instagram? Is that TikTok? Find what platform works for you. You don't have to be on all the platforms. Two, make sure your content represents you. Do you guys see a theme here? Three, if you're aiming for an entertainment career, showcase your skills online. For example, one of the speakers wanted to be a TV host, so she began making YouTube videos to showcase her skill set. Another person loved doing magic, so he would film his magic, um, like different magic tricks, and put them on YouTube, and then people would find them and call them, and just they fly him out to do one magic trick. Four, treat your content as if your grandma is watching or listening if your goal is to acquire sponsors. Five, don't worry about views and numbers. Six, focus on engagement. So they were saying that in today's society, it doesn't matter how many people are watching your videos or how many people are liking your videos. It's all about the comments. It's how many people are engaging with you, how many people are, are writing to you or commenting on your content. So again, guys, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash funny brown girl. One, would love for you to subscribe, but two, I would love for you to engage with me. I put these podcasts up there um, so you can listen to the podcast on YouTube. You can actually see me because I actually have now started videotaping this introductory monologue. So if you have questions for me, if you want to see more content, if you want to see something specific, if you want me to interview someone specific, leave it in the comments and I will get back to you, I promise. And see how you can shamelessly plug to Seven. Experiment and try different types of content. So they were saying about this is like, if you don't know what you want to do, try a blog, try a podcast, try YouTube. But even on YouTube, say you want to do YouTube, but you don't know what kind of videos to make. Try everything. Do a cooking video, do a fashion video, do a skit. See what you enjoy doing. And then you can kind of like maneuver from there. Don't let bad experiences or comments demotivate you. Learn from them. Nine, don't be afraid to evolve. And 10, understand your priorities, meaning how do you prioritize your content versus your family? Or how do you prioritize making content versus money? And so you really need to know, like, if somebody in your family needed you, like, but you also had to make content, where are your priorities? And if somebody said, I'll pay you money to do this, but it doesn't align with your brand values, would you do it? So really just know who you are and know yourself and then know why you're doing, why you're putting content out there so that you always know how to prioritize. Okay, another conference panel that I went to was called Battling Burnout, Coping with Feelings that Come with Content Curation Challenges. Key ta oh, speakers, speakers. Brandon Baldwin, M. Zodic, Jonathan Paula, Katie Morden, and Rhino. Key takeaways. Number one, burnout affects everyone. Everyone on the panel hands down agreed that they had felt burnout at some point in their career. So it's not just you or me. Two, learn to put yourself first. Three, have patience with the process. Four, don't let others bring you down. And five, do what you love. See a key theme? Okay, another panel was called Pushing Through. Sometimes what you're working on doesn't perform as you wanted it to, or something didn't turn out how you expected. And this happens to me all the time. Like, I will put out a podcast episode and think you guys are going to love it, and then you guys don't seem to love it because not a lot of you listen to it, and there's, like, this, like, dip in my numbers, and I'm like... Why didn't you guys like it? Like, what's going on? And so on this panel, we hear how these creators stay motivated through the ups and downs of life and work. Speakers included Enoch True, Haley Reese, Mark Daniel, Slice and Rice, Vanessa Nagoya. Key takeaways. Keep reading about changes in the algorithms on Google, YouTube, Instagram. Sometimes it's not your content. Sometimes your content can be great. It can be amazing. But the way the algorithms are set up, it's just not going to perform well. And so you have to keep up with the trends. You have to keep up with what's happening on these different platforms. 
for example, I'm not too familiar with the YouTube algorithm, but like I know for Instagram about a year ago, they changed the, they, they changed the algorithm. So it didn't, it didn't matter how many people were liking your content. That didn't mean that your content was going to show up on their feeds. Um, and so less and less people were seeing your content. So it wasn't that your content wasn't great. It was just that the way the algorithm changed, not as many people were seeing your content as before. And so you would have seen a dip in your numbers. Key takeaway number two, remember, even influencers videos don't perform well. Three, keep a running list of ideas for when you have writer's block. Four, find new ideas in the comments section of your content and other people's content. Five, remember why you started making and putting out content, the joy, the passion, the love. Um, and then that was actually, that was actually the last panel I went to. Um, it was already Sunday evening at that point. And then, so key takeaways from the entire conference, because as you saw, a lot of the, a lot of the key takeaways we were pretty similar from panel to panel. So key takeaways that I got from the entire conference, if you are going to be a successful content creator, do what you love and do it for the love, not for the money stay consistent and have fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode um, of Playlist Live. I, if I were you and you were de debating going to this conference next year, I would say think about a few things. One is, are you seriously really considering a YouTube um, career? And if you are, why do you feel like you need to go to Playlist and why can't you find those learnings of what you want to do online? So a lot of these content creators um, from what it sounds like, put up one or two videos every year where they kind of talk about their process. They talk about the equipment they use. They talk about how they got started. And so I personally think that you don't need to go to this conference. Um, I personally think unless you're going there to collaborate. So say you are already a YouTuber or you're like really into it and you want to go meet these influencers and content creators and meet other people and collaborate. Perfect chance to go and collaborate. But if you're just going there to learn about these key takeaways, um, I think it was pretty repetitive. I think that some of the stuff was pretty um, obvious and I think a lot of it you can learn on your own. Um, but if you do need that motivation and that inspiration, then totally go if you really like conferences. But I think um, unless you really are a big YouTube or TikToker fan and you want to go meet your, your favorite YouTubers and influencers and content creators and have meetups with them and go to pool parties and just party with a bunch of 17 and 18 year olds. And if you're 17 or 18, you're listening to this, go ahead and go. But as someone in my thirties, um, was not my thing, but, um, definitely something to think about. It's expensive. I mean, the passes were like 200, $250 plus hotels, um, food and then travel. So um, I definitely, I definitely highly recommend conferences. Um, I, I've been to a lot. I think some are definitely better than others. I'm not sure that this one would have been something that I would have gone to if I had to pay for it. If you have more questions about my thoughts on the playlist live conference or just YouTube or TikTok in general, or any specific questions about anything I said here, feel free to send me an email. Again, that's hi at funnybrowngirl.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Until then, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning.